For today's movie review, I'll be reviewing the movie Iron Man Rise of the Technovore. Now, this basically is another, like, Marvel anime made by Madhouse Studios. However, this is a movie, and to be honest, I'm not, even, I'm not sure if this is supposed to serve as the continuation of the Iron Man anime, or if this is supposed to be its own standalone thing. Although, I feel like this is supposed to be its own standalone movie, and I can say this much. Much better than the Iron Man anime itself, but not by much. Now, the the central plot of Rise of Technovore is essentially about um, Tony Stark getting framed for a terrorist attack by this um, supervillain called the Technovore. And he tries to clear his name, but as he clears his name, he's basically getting pursued by S.H.I.E.L.D. agents. Now, what I liked about this movie is that basically it's an anime film. I like anime in general, but this is by Madhouse. If you're not familiar with Madhouse, they made like anime such as Death Note and a movie like Redline. The quality of Animation is good, although some of the character designs can be questionable at times, but overall the animation was good. And I also like how they take notes from the uh, cinematic universe because some of the designs and the armors look like something right out of the Iron Man movies. There's a lot of action scenes throughout this whole movie, like there's never a dull moment. It's, I feel like there's like a fight scene every like two minutes. I feel like that's as far as the positives go for this movie. Now, what I did like about this film, the voice acting. I felt that the voice acting for Stark was okay, Pepper Potts was okay, and some of the S.H.I.E.L.D. agents were okay, but I felt like the voice actor for Rhodey did not match his character, and some of the other, like, background characters, I just didn't feel like the voice matched up to those characters. That and the Technovore itself was a weird interpretation of the Technovore, because I'm used to the giant nanotech monstrosity that you see in, like, the cartoons and whatnot. This here is just more of, like, a, a guy in a nanotech suit. Also, if there's one thing I don't like about some current animated movies, it's the use of both CGI and 2D animation within the same film. The 3D animation I could have done without. Like, I wish it was 2D like the rest of the film. That and also, like, the first four or five minutes of the movie is okay, but after that, it gets really slow. I wish that they sped up the movie, and I kind of wish the movie was just shorter in general. Like, that's all I have to say about the movie. As for the characters of the movie, you basically have Iron Man, War Machine, Pepper Potts, the Technovore, the Punisher, Shield, like, all the Shield members from Nick Fury, Black Widow, Hawkeye, so on and so forth, and a bunch of side characters. Now, because I thought the, like, the way most of them were drawn were okay, however, I felt the Rhodey kind of had a different voice actor, but I felt that every, like, all the S.H.I.E.L.D. members had a good voice acting. Then comes the Punisher. I just felt his presence in the film, I could have done without him. Like, I felt that his character in this entire movie was similar to that of Gambit in X-Men Origins Wolverine, where all he does is move the plot along, that's it. Like, I didn't feel he did much in this entire film. Then comes the Technovore himself. Now, in the movie, it turns out that the Technovore is actually Eccleston the son of Obenstein, and basically he created the Technovore. And the way, it's just, I didn't know how I felt about this because they essentially pulled in Ivan Vanko. For example, with Ivan Vanko, they took the costumed villain Whiplash and the armored Crimson Dynamo and created a different interpretation of a character. This here is basically Eccleston who made Technovore. And the thing is, if you don't know what Technovore is, it's basically like this um, nanotech like monstrosity. That was essentially made by a scientist within Stark Industries to kill everybody, including Tony Stark himself. And basically, it turns, like, people into nanotech monsters. But this here, it was just, it just looks too humanoid. Like, I wish they had something else with the design or made both Eccleston Stein and Technovar two different characters, not the same villain. And as for the secondary, like, all the minor characters, basically, I felt some of the voices did not match up to the characters. That was my only complaint. Like, the voice actors movie could have had some work done to it. Now, my final verdict on Iron Man The Rise of Technovar is that I like the animation quality and the action sequences, I just wish the story itself was a bit shorter. And as for the characters, basically I felt for most of the S.H.I.E.L.D. characters in Tony Stark, they were okay in Pepper. However, I could have done without the Punisher. The voice actor for War Machine could have been different, or had a different voice actor altogether. And the Technovore itself, I just did not like the way they approached the Technovore. So, before I give my final rating, what does everyone else have to say about Rise of Technovore?
So it looks like Iron Man Rise of Tignavor generally got negative reviews. Do I think it's bad? Yeah, it's better than the Iron Man anime, but not by much. So I give The Rise of Tignavor a 2.5 out of 5. I like anime, and I like Marvel superheroes. As she has, I felt that the approach to the Marvel anime here could have been better. And I don't really have a question at this point. So see you later.